Hi, this is Thomas Varhegi. I am presenting the second and the most important video on the subject of disproving Cantor's diagonal argument. So let's start. When constructing an integer, let S denote the number of unique symbols available. We use D to stand for digit size or for the number of digits describing that integer. Then we will have a total of n equals s to the d unique integers ranging from 0 to s to the d minus 1. Use the decimal integer symbol set. Uh, s equals 10 and basically it contains the symbols from 0 through 9. Set the initial digit size to d equals 6 is a good start. Step 1. List all possible D-digit integers which range from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, or one less than a million. See table number 1 on next page for D equals X. Note the leading zeros. 2. Step 2. Pick a random integer Ri which A is D-digits long and B use the symbols listed in step number 1. For example, RI equals 848,739 or RI equals 003450, either way. 3. By virtue of the two rules in step number 2, RI must exist in the list created in step 1. Step 4. Increment D by 1, then go to step number 1. Repeat the loop at will forever. Table 1. When looking at this table we can confirm that any six digit decimal integer picked at random or constructed using any algorithm will be one of the all-inclusive list of six digit integers listed because of the obvious facts. 1. Each of its digits belongs to the current 10-member symbol set. 2. It has 6 digits. Note, then when we are saying using any algorithm, of course that includes Cantor's diagonal uh, construction of uh, an other integer from digits of existing integers. Table 2. Here I'm showing a simple example of uh, taking an integer 394,795 and showing at what ICN or integer counting number location it is uh, uh, stored, so to speak. It is not really stored, that is where it is located. The, you can see that the integer start one value behind the counting numbers causing an offset of 1. Conclusion 1. Cantor's diagonal argument cannot create novel integers of finite digit size. 2. Steps number, true, number 2 through number 6 may be repeated at will without bounds. Step number 3. There is no known mechanism or roadblock which would invalidate the logic described in steps number 2 through number 6, no matter how big D becomes. Number 4. We basically apply the well-known proof by induction, which is embedded in the combinatorical formulas producing variations, combinations, and permutations, and so on. Step number 5. Maybe I have overcomplicated things. If we stand back and look we don't see much more mathematics here than the simple act of counting integers with carry over. If you believe otherwise and have a sound counter argument, please let me know. Note, I used or I allowed uh, superfluous leading zeros and we might think it is imprecise, but we are focusing here on the combinatorial representation of symbols instead of the value function of integers. The counting inter of integers, of course, still takes place using proper integer sequence numbers. Just a footnote, 
we don't have to use numerical digits we can use uh, uh, uppercase uh, alphabet lowercase alphabet uh, uh, Japanese characters it doesn't matter okay as long as we use the proper uh, combination permutation and, and variation arithmetic okay thank you for watching and have a good day